And for more on this, we're joined by Seth Kaplan in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He's the managing partner of Airline Weekly magazine. Welcome back to the broadcast. Good to be with you, Susan. Well, if I'm a family member, I'm wondering, you know, will they find this serial number? And if they do find this serial number, Seth, will they be able to tell if this plane broke apart in the air or upon impact? Yeah, Susan, I, I think the very first thing you said there is really the most relevant part here. If you're a family member, I, those are the people really who most of all are, are hanging on to this because let's be clear, even if this turns out to be a piece of MH370, this doesn't necessarily tell us a whole lot more than we already know. What it would do, and this at least psychologically for the family members would be useful, would be unfortunately to confirm that the, the, that the flight did indeed crash in the Indian Ocean. But that has been the most likely scenario since, you know, several days after this crash, um, and so, or several days after the disappearance, rather. And so beyond that, uh, you know, you'd have to connect a whole lot of dots before we come close to knowing what exactly happened with the aircraft, you know, where, if there's in fact a debris field somewhere, where that debris field would be, and, you know, what was the cause of what happened. So, you know, really the most useful thing about knowing that this came from MH370, if it did, would be that finality, if you will, for the family members to, you know, holding on to hope. There were some of these alternative theories about what might have happened, however much they might have been stretching the bounds of reality, but those family members hoping that something else happened. It's such a vast body of water there. I mean, what are the chances that they'll even be able to find the rest of the remaining uh, aircraft if it is, in fact, MH370? Yeah, still not great because the, the way it works, and, you know, and this is a matter really for oceanographers, but the way it works with currents is that they can be rather localized, uh, you know, where, uh, you know, you can try to reverse engineer the process and say, well, you know, what has been happening with ocean currents over the past 16 months? Where might this have come from? But it doesn't necessarily uh, lead you close enough. Uh, you know, Kate, during her report right there, mentioned the Air France crash off the coast of Brazil back in 2009. That was Air France Flight 447. And for perspective, Susan, you know, in that case, we really knew more or less where the aircraft went down. And it still took two years to find the debris field below the ocean you know, when you were dealing with a very localized area. So here we're talking about something where, yeah, perhaps one piece of debris, again, uh, you know, obviously more useful than nothing at all. But, you know, it could have been a drift. Uh, it could have drifted rather a very long distance and uh, very hard to necessarily trace that back to anything else. A and then you think about how much else would have to go right before we'd really know very much. You'd have to find that debris field. You'd have to somehow hopefully find, oh, you know, the cockpit and voice data recorders, for example, somewhere on the floor of the ocean. And even, Susan, if you found those, you know, the voice recorder, for example, would only have the last two hours of the flight. If, right. as is somewhat likely, one person had locked himself or herself in the cockpit alone, right. uh, you know, and there wasn't any kind of conversation, we still might know almost nothing. So a whole lot to learn. All right. Well, Seth, let's say, you know, this may be one of the scenarios that a family member is thinking about. What if a bomb would have gone off? What if that's would have brought this plane down if it is, in fact, MH370? Will we know anything like that from the investigation they're doing from this one part? Yeah, and, and that's the kind of thing, perhaps, you know, the size of the debris, for example, uh, very broadly speaking, you know, the uh, when you have a, a uh, you know, a plane, for example, just fall out of the sky, you would have debris perhaps not as big as if it had come to a, you know, somewhat of what you might call a smoother water landing. In this case, we're dealing with a flap that is that is sizable. So, uh, you know, that could tend to indicate, you know, less likely a bomb. But, you know, even even in cases where you had a bomb, uh, you know, the Pan Am flight that blew up over Lockerbie, Scotland, for example, back in in uh, the late 1980s, you had sizable parts there. But yes, when there is a bomb, you can have evidence of that. You know, MH17, the other Malaysia Airlines flight that uh, tragically went down last year, of course, over Ukraine. Uh, in that case, you know, of course, there was a lot more certainty about what had happened, that it was likely a missile that hit it. Uh, you know, so you had different characteristics here. So far, from everything we've seen, you know, nothing indicating that, but again, a long way away from, from, uh, from being able to conclude anything like that. Well, Seth Kaplan, thank you so much. Joining us from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We really appreciate it. Always good to see you.